We're really happy to be joined today by Pia Adenkilt Hansen. She is Director General in DG Com in the European Commission, where she leads the Commission's efforts to communicate the European Union's policies to an external audience. She's dedicated much of her life to this goal, so it's a real pleasure for her to be with us today. Thanks for joining us, Pia. Thank you, I'm delighted to be here. So I might start by um, just touching on the results of the, the most recent European election in May last year. Turnout was higher than it's been in a number of decades, but there's still quite a long way to go. Um, what are some of the main challenges in terms of participatory democracy in the European Union, in your opinion? As you say, it was a very encouraging uh, turnout, reversing uh, a decline and basically getting us on the right side of, of 50 when it comes to uh, the turnout uh, Europe-wide. We cannot be complacent about it, as uh, encouraged as we are, because it was really heartening. Uh, so we need, to, we need to continue to think how we can nurture uh, the, uh, the European democracy in between the European elections, because that's also what it is about. And I think it's about making a stronger connection uh, and a stronger perceived connection between uh, what is decided at the European level and what is the impact, the benefits on people's lives. And this is one of President von der Leyen's six headline ambitions, a new push for European democracy. I wonder, could you talk us through some of the main initiatives the Commission will look to roll out over the next five years? Absolutely. Uh, a push uh, for European democracy, again, you know, making our European democracy more vibrant, living also in between, of course, the very important uh, moments of elections, which uh, are the most eminent moments where people express uh, directly, of course, in, in votes, by the way, nationally or European-wide, uh, their uh, political uh, preferences and choices. But in between elections, uh, uh, there is a lot that we can do, indeed, to keep our democracy healthy, to keep it sound. So this new push has, uh, at its heart, uh, a new conference on the future of Europe, it's an initiative which is an interinstitutional one, even if it was in uh, Mrs. von der Leyen's uh, political guidelines, our president. Uh, it's designed uh, to be an interinstitutional endeavor, so involving uh, the other main European institutions, uh, starting with the European Parliament, uh, elected by the people of Europe, and of course also the representatives of the member states in the Council. Uh, and other institutions uh, where both uh, uh, the economy, social partners and our regions are represented, I'm sure, will also play an important role in participating in this exercise. So this conference uh, should run over two years and indeed enable uh, the people of Europe to have a stronger say on the issues that matter to them. We have set a frame uh, that we believe is, is, is very important in terms of priorities for the next five years. By the way, very inspired by what the people told us in previous citizens' dialogues, for example, and national consultations of citizens as well. And uh, this uh, consultation should run over two years, take it to the next level, go wider, go deeper also into the, uh, not only in the capitals of our member states, not only speaking to the usual people who care and are interested uh, in European affairs, but trying to engage maybe with audiences who are not so familiar with uh, speaking about Europe. So those are some of the things that we will do over those two years. And we are in the design phase, I would say, at the moment, uh, reaching a, an agreement at political level as to how exactly this should work. It's not the only thing we're doing, and we're not starting from scratch. There's also a very important uh, European Democracy Action Plan underway, which will aim at also looking at how we harness uh, the democratic resilience uh, of our member states how we also address more robust, robustly the risk of, uh, of interference in our elections, because it's of course crucial that our elections can continue to run freely and fairly and uh, enable people to make their choices in full independence. So those are some of the things that we're doing, in addition to focusing also on rule of law, which is a basis for our democracies, uh, equality uh, uh, and, and other issues. So a very busy agenda. 
and in terms of core messages that the Commission would like to get across to European citizens, particularly the groups you mentioned that aren't traditionally engaged, what kind of messages mm -hmm. will, will you seek to put across over the next five years? Well, I think the most important message is that there is no preconceived outcome of this uh, exercise. Uh, it is really the citizens that will decide uh, what is the outcome. The message is join the conversation be part of the European debate, come discuss with us, whether it, it is about you know, climate change, about migration, about the economy, all these issues that we know people care about, the choices that we will make uh, as we, for example, undertake a green transformation in Europe, uh, both to make our economies and our livelihoods sustainable, but also to create new opportunities for people. Uh, these discussions and many others, we would like to hear from citizens, and so we invite them to engage. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure, and we wish you all the best with the rollout of this important initiative and others. Thank you very much. Thank you.